Welcome viewers to second part of Arduino based ECU for model jet engines. We started off with fairly simple designs like this one. And this is our current design that we are working on. So here we explain uh, how our board is organized. This is a simple prototyping board with header pins for various components. This is the power connector coming out of ESP32. This is SPI connector. These are servo connectors. And this is for RPM. The first long set of female header pins is for ESP32 dev kit. The second one is for 3.3 volt to 5 volt converter. And the third one is for 5 volt uh, regulator that we are using for our RPM sensor uh, just to avoid any uh, interference on RPM measurements. So now if you look down, we have a bunch of resistors which are basically uh, to condition the input to the ESP32. So this pair of uh, resistors is basically voltage divider which takes in the voltage from the LiPo battery and reduces it to a uh, range of the ESP32 measurement which is maximum of 3.3 volts. The second uh, 1K resistors which I just pointed out are connected to a 3.3 volt Zener to condition the RC signal input as we realize that the RC input from a uh, certain receivers uh, is 5 volt while from Futaba it's actually 3 volts. These headers are for the display uh, that we are going to connect to see our outputs. You can see the rest of the board just contains some wires uh, and uh, some jumpers and uh, a button that is used to uh, put ESP32 into a web server mode through which the uh, settings can be changed. From the bottom you can see uh, that it's just a simple prototyping board so let's start putting components on it. ESP32 dev kit. Simply plugs in the place. This is our 3.3 volt to 5 volt converter that I'm using uh, to condition the output to the servos. This is our RPM sensor which we described in the previous video. Uh, it is basically a YS27 module that has been modified to act as an amplifier for our hall sensor. We are using a separate connector to get input from the uh, RPM sensor as we want to connect a capacitor there to condition the input. And finally, our uh, 5 volt uh, module which basically will take uh, input from a 2 to 3 cell LiPo battery which could be 7 to 12 volts almost and condition it to 5 volt. We want to give a stable 5 volt to our RPM sensor. In our test we found out that the RPM sensor is most sensitive to voltage variations and that's why we are taking uh, utmost care here and uh, using a separate uh, voltage regulator for it. So all the components are in place. Now we can start connecting the uh, wires and uh, connectors. So here are our two displays 
which are basically uh, just connected to a similar prototyping board and outputs taken out through a header pin uh, connector so just to make the assembly a little bit cleaner. Now the display is connected. Just one wire left. Okay, so display module is completely connected. We are going to use a Futaba receiver to connect to the bottom two servo connectors for the input to the ESP32 module. Here's our Futaba receiver. This was the first gotcha that we got because the standard servo tester outputs a 5 volt signal, but the Futaba uh, receiver was not outputting a 5, 5 volt. Uh, it was somewhere in the range of 3 to 3.2 volts signal. So we couldn't use a simple voltage divider. You have to limit the voltage input to our ESP32 dev kit to below 3 volts. The third connector is for the uh, voltage divider to measure the battery voltage. This is the two pin header here. So we are going to connect it. The same five volt, uh, the, the, sorry, the battery input is connected to the uh, five volt regulator. This is the voltage uh, input to the receiver as we need to power up the receiver. Let's move to the top of the board. Start with the top right. So this is the input connector. Okay, let's move the board up a little bit to connect easily to the connectors. Okay, so this connector is for the gas valve solenoid input and this is basically um, connected to ground and the output of the ESP32. This is our gear type thermocouple sensor module. So this is the power connector, we will connect it to 3.3 volts power coming out from the ESP32 and these three pins come out from the SPI pins. So our K-type thermocouple is now connected. Then we connect our starter motor and fuel pump servos. So here is the power connector from the speed controller for these modules. This will power up the output bus and here is the starter motor connector. Okay, 
that's plugged. Move on to the fuel pump connector. Okay, that's in place. So this is our glow plug driver connector, which as we described in the previous video, we are using RCD3007 module. Uh, true to our promise, we want to keep all power components outside our main microcontroller board. So this module is available on uh, AliExpress, eBay for somewhere around $15 uh, or $12, somewhere in that range. So that makes our uh, microcontroller circuit a lot cheaper. So we'll connect it to the third servo connector on our board. So these are the three servo outputs basically that we are providing. Uh, fuel pump control, starter motor control and the glow driver control. The gas valve is a simple on off control. So here's our RPM connector which is basically an input. It will be connected to this connector which will go through YS27 module. So now our RPM connector is done. All we need to connect is the gas valve power which we are taking from the uh, servo power basically. Okay, so gas solenoid power is connected. So here we see the power for the um, K-type thermocouple module and signal for the gas valve. This is our SPI pins for the K-type thermocouple module. So there are servo outputs for the starter motor, for the fuel pump and for the glow plug driver. So this is three servo outputs. The fourth connector is just being used as a power supply for the solenoid valve. This is the RPM connector going through the YS27 module, which is powered by a five volt regulator. This is our ESP32 dev kit. system is connected now. Do like and share our channel if you support uh, our contents, support us so we can make more videos like this. So now uh, to power up the um, starter motor and uh, the fuel pump, we need multiple connections from the LiPo battery and we are using a standard distribution board which is used for the quadcopters so which can take in a single lipo battery and supply power to multiple speed controllers here you can see we are using the two outputs one for the uh, fuel pump control and one for the starter motor control we will use the third output to get a voltage measure which we will input into ESP32 to give us the uh, battery voltage. Here are the servo connectors that will be connected to our main board. So here's a more detailed explanation of how we connected the whole um, uh, power components to our microcontroller board. Here you can see fuel pump which is connected to a brushed DC speed controller which is connected to the power distribution board and from power distribution board the control cables are coming to our microcontroller board. Now uh, looking at the solenoid valve it is also 
connected through LR7843 MOSFET driver module which is optically isolated so we can supply the required voltage to the solenoid valve and get the output directly from a microcontroller. So here is our starter motor. The cable routing of the starter motor goes through here and then comes to a similar brushed uh, DC speed controller as this is a DC starter motor. It comes to again our distribution board to get the battery power from a single LiPo battery and the control cable is connected to the servo output as we described earlier. Here's our K-type thermocouple module with its power and uh, SPI connectors. So here we have connected two capacitors at the output of this module as uh, we were getting a lot of noise from RCD3007 module and uh, our uh, voltage measurement, uh, sorry, our temperature measurement was going haywire. By using these capacitors, um, yeah, we solved this problem. Time to test if our circuit is working fine or not. So we connect the battery. Can we see the 5 volt regulator is on, the server receiver is on, my transmitter is on here. So I need to power up the ESP32. So I'll we'll do that, and the system will start going through checks one by one. Okay, now glow driver is on, starter is on, fuel pump is on, gas valves on. So all systems are tested and our system is waiting for the command you can see we can increase the throttle and it will read it's reading the temperature rpm throttle and it's looking at the mode so I think our electronic setup is good now we just need to put in a suitable program to respond to our commands set up a startup sequence of the turbine and then do the first start wish us luck